I'm a strategist, I'm a father, <laughs> I'm one passionate mofo. So I've had the leaders of countries, presidents of the United States, presidents of the largest companies in the world, uh, billionaire entrepreneurs, and I've had moms and dads and entertainers, you know, Serena Williams in the sports field, uh, Hugh Jackman, Pitbull, Usher, you name it. So the one thing they all have in common, I think, is they're hungry. And I know that sounds simplistic, but I believe that's the single most important element that separates the quality of people's lives. It's not just the ability to have hunger, but to sustain it. Hunger means that you want more. You want more of yourself. You want to make a bigger difference. You want to be a better parent. You want to, you want to do something more than there is today and that you don't get satisfied. Most people start out with hunger at an early stage of life and they lose it. But the people that come to me are hungry either because something's happened They've had a birthday with a zero on it. They've gone through a divorce. They're starting a business and they know I've got to have a different level. Or they're the best in the world and they're always looking for that edge that makes the difference. What keeps you hungry? I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what it is is uh, I think everybody is born with hunger. Like there's, there's, a, there's a desire to grow, to expand, to learn. And then disappointment sets in early in life for most people. And then we look to blame something outside of ourselves. And there are many events in our lives that can affect us all. We've all had pain and challenges. But I think um, if you can find within yourself the part of you that wants to, to constantly give something more than yourself, if you can find a mission larger than yourself, then you're more pulled to do something than trying to push yourself. And pull has much more power than push. I always say motive does matter. That if, you, if your motive is to serve something greater, there is an energy that comes up inside of you. So I'm... I, I feed two million people a year because somebody fed my family when I was 11 years old and um, now this year we're feeding four million. I, you know, I want to do more in that area. And every business I'm in, that drive just doesn't go away. Well, it's interesting, since 2008, you've seen most large enterprise companies have really figured out how to respond to the world economic crisis at that time by cutting, right? They figured out how to cut their costs, they grew their bottom lines, and uh, they built up their cash. And so they've done very well. But that was five years ago and it's getting hard to keep cutting. Uh, you can't cut your way to growth at this point. So most major corporations are now saying, what do we do about the top line? How do we really grow revenues and sales? And so I built something called Coaching in the Cloud, which we've done for some of the most successful companies in the world. And what it does is it comes in and it revamps the sales process. You think about it, in the 1990s, you had all these companies that were re-engineering and they said, look, we're gonna go virtual and save the real estate. And all these salespeople are gonna just virtualize. There weren't great tools then, there are now, salesforce.com being one of those, right? Um, but the challenge is they've lost some of the disciplines that maximize the process. So um, we also, though, are showing people how to maximize technology. So I have a, a patent pending process in a company that's working with everybody from General Electric to Reuters. It's called Knowledge Now. And it allows you to take the knowledge you need instead of learning the old style. We got great technology and an old way of learning. You get to learn in the application, like salesforce.com. While you're there, you're able to get the answers you need when you're working on clients right now. Not go to some class where you're gonna forget 90% of it, but do it right now. We found it to be really, really impactful. Well, it, I believe in rapid change. Technology allows you to create change really rapidly. And I think, you know, social media, I've found to be a really useful research tool because we're living in a world where so much information is coming at us all the time that I always say, you know, it's like we're drowning in information, but we're starving for some wisdom. And if you follow people that are really brilliant, it's almost like having an intelligent browser where they can bring you to the very best stuff right away. I mean, one of the companies I have came about because I'm always following these people. I was following some 3D printing and I found out about this young man that when he was 14, he met a girl who had lost her arm and found out they didn't have the money for an articulated arm. They're about $80,000. If you lose both arms, uh, you know, over a lifetime, you have to get three for each arm. You can only imagine, it's about beyond the range of most people. And at 17, he created an artificial arm that does more than the traditional arm, articulates, but it can actually, you know, lift 350 pounds. And it was all driven, but instead of $80,000, he does it with 3D printing and it costs $250. And I, I saw the site, he was meeting with President Obama, NASA gave him a scholarship. I reached out to him and now we formed a company together that's forming, we're building some exoskeletons for people who hopefully will be able to walk, taking those arms and being able to take it to places like Africa, all over the world with now at this price point, people's lives can change. My companies now together, the companies that I started and the companies I'm partners in do more than $5 billion in annual sales. If I could have ever dreamed that I have that kind of impact, it would seem ridiculous. Uh, but it's all come out of this hunger to constantly make things better and to find a way to do more for other people than anybody else is doing. And I found if you find a way to do better for everybody else, uh, then obviously you have plenty of freedoms in your own life as well. What's 
book is Tony Robbins reading now? Uh, one I'm reading right now is The Believing Brain, which is fascinating. It talks about how our beliefs control our life, control our experience of reality, how it's shaped by both biochemistry and your environment. Really, really great book. All right, The Believing Brain. Advice. One could say that you give people advice, you give yes. them motivation, inspiration. What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? God, I've had so much, but I think one of the most important ones was early in my life, uh, one of my mentors, a man named Jim Rohn, said, Tony, all you have to focus on in your life is find a way to add more value than anybody else does, and you'll never have to worry about anything. Be the person that does more for others, and life will just be any thing you want out of it, really is what it is. And, so, and he also said the way to do that is every day work harder on yourself than anything else. Because if you become more intelligent, more valuable, more skilled, you can add more value to other people. Let's uh, do something a little more prosaic, which sure. is technology, apps. I'm sure you're yes. obviously a avid fan of all this stuff. Yes. Do you have a favorite piece of technology or a favorite? It's different app? than you might think. I do have a very, it's a large piece of technology. Go ahead. I'm in a cryotherapy. Are you familiar with it? Yes. So for people who aren't, uh, I'm on stage 50 hours in a weekend. I got five, 10,000 people. I do 26 and a half miles on one day. It starts at 8.30, goes to literally one o'clock in the morning. I do 22 miles two days before. So it's like ultra marathon. I used to ice myself as I did in football, and you know, if you ice yourself. You used to take your ice baths. Yes, right? yeah, because you have to to bring the swelling down in your body. Um, and now I do these three minute nitrogen filled cases that you get in. It's like a sauna, and it reduces your body temperature to minus 220 Fahrenheit. And that sounds like you'd freeze to death or you'd burn. If you had water in your body, you'd burn. You get third degree burns. But there's no moisture. And it is amazing. It was developed originally for people with arthritis. I got one from my mother-in-law who had all these problems, no more arthritis challenges. So I started using it. It gives you endorphins. It resets your system. It's an extraordinary piece of technology. It's expensive, but you can go, go to centers that are showing up all over the U.S. Most of the athletes, the Lakers and so forth, are starting to use these.